meeting. And I call it to adjourn. I mean, to I call it to order. <laughs> I do have to be out here out quickly, but not that quickly. <laughs> well, now you know what my brain is doing today. So we don't have any members of the public here today. Does anyone know, of, has anybody told you they were excusing themselves? Because we have Mary and we have uh, Bob as excused today. Uh, oh, everybody, Bob, our new member, Bob. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So there are people that aren't here, but okay. So did everybody get a copy of the agenda? Mm -hmm. And oh yes, mm -hmm. please um, shut down your cell phones. And if you happen to be recording, we would like to know that you're recording. It is being recorded as you speak by the camera in the back there. So the minutes from the meeting on June 13th. I would like to know if people approve of them and we can have, um, I'm losing my words here. I make a motion. Make a motion. <laughs> and make a motion to approve the minutes as stated. Any second? Second. second. All those approved? Say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Okay, it passes unanimously. So our first order of business is to introduce Nancy. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Nancy, yes, how do you spell your last name? Yesu? Yesu. Yesu. Yesu, whatever. I answer everything. <laughs> <laughs> Not the Greek Yasu? Well, it's Italian. <laughs> so it means Jesus, actually, in Italian, oh, too. So. Oh. Yesu. Yesu. Mm -hmm. Is our new program coordinator. She's been here a couple weeks. Um, and. We've got lots of plans, and I want everybody to welcome her, and um, hopefully some of you will be working with her on some of the, the working groups that we're doing. Welcome. Well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. It's been a nice so start. The last two weeks been like this. Well, I was here two weeks, and then I went on vacation, so that was <laughs> really well for me. That was so stressful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm planning on, that was really the plan from here going forward, work two weeks, take a week off, you know. <laughs> Um, <laughs> kind of cushy job like that, but uh, so yeah, just kind of hectic, but great. Just trying to put names to faces, etc. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. gonna take a while for yeah, sure. Course, yeah. Um, yeah, trying to you know get out from behind my desk every day, which is a little challenging. Uh, but I keep reminding myself that Rome was not built in a day, so uh, we'll get there. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's I already found that to be true, so thank you. Nancy, can yeah. you tell us a little bit about yourself, where you came from? Uh, well, I, I grew up in Northampton, so I didn't get too far. Uh, grew up next to Murphy Real Estate on North Elm Street, uh, across from Child's Park. Uh, so was here till I graduated from Springfield College. Um, and then... Uh, Promptly got married. I married a Long Meadow boy and uh, lived in Holyoke for a while, lived in Springfield for a while, and now live in Long Meadow. Uh, I have three grown children, uh, a son who lives now in Durham, North Carolina, a daughter who is married and uh, lives in Long Meadow, and then a daughter who um, just graduated from pharmacy school and lives in Boston. So, uh, yeah, so empty nester, but um, still busy checking in with them on a regular basis. Uh, and I previously worked in uh, Christian education for a long time uh, in Long Meadow. Uh, I also worked for a little while at the East Long Meadow Council on Aging, where I did um, program coordination and volunteer coordination, and then uh, most recently worked at the South Hadley Council on Aging. So any questions about that or anything in particular you <laughs> want to know? Well, they're getting a new building soon, aren't they? They are, yeah. <laughs> yes, they are. Yep. Well, thank you for coming here. Yeah. Yes. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, good, it's good to be home. Good to be home. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Thank you, Nancy. Of course, yeah. We're not going to make her sit through the whole meeting. Yeah. Well, I mean, I would love to, but unfortunately, I have something else I do have to get to, but I'm going to stay for a little bit, so. 
Okay. So if I when I leave, it's not for any particular reason other than that. We don't have anything written down as old business or new business at this point. <laughs> I don't know if anybody had it, but be sure to get it to us beforehand. So we can go right to the director's report. Um, so I have um, interviewed and hired an assistant director who will start on August 5th. Um, and we are hanging in in the interim and um, we are planning programs for the fall. There are you know, new programs that just are starting now too, which yesterday the farm, first farmer's market started. Um, and the first cooking club started. Um, and had a, good, we had a lot of people show up for the farmer's market. The cooking club's gonna probably take a little longer to get going, but um, they had a good time and um, we sold a lot of the food that that um, they made in that group, which was um, braised fennel with uh, figs and apricots. And um, kale pesto. Kale pesto, yeah, also. No, I wasn't. I was supposed to come. I have a share, a half share, and nobody got in touch with me about when it was yesterday. I wasn't paying attention, and I didn't get, you know, the day of the time, so I missed it. So it was um, a kale and walnut pesto. So I guess a lot of people uh, purchased those things. So I'm really excited about that because I think that um, you know people will be more inspired maybe to cook with their vegetables if they have the pesto, and then um, they also have some you know food to go home and and try out new things they might have not tried before. So you know a lot of people haven't tried fennel. So. And then also, as part of that project, um, the chef, Kevin, is going to be um, providing samples that are going to be served at all the farmers markets um, in the housing developments where the mobile market um, initiative has been happening. So people will, it's really a very successful way to get people to try things they haven't tried before, like fennel or kale or, um, and, um, then they might be inspired to start purchasing those items more. So, um, and um, I'm sure if there are other new programs starting in August, but um, new developments are um, that we, Elder Vision um, funded the purchase of outdoor furniture for outdoor seating and dining. Um, that should be arriving soon. And, um, and in August, we'll also be doing a community listening session for the Age and Dementia Friendly Initiative um, and a project with the architect, I mean the landscape designer from Conway School of Design. So um, I'm not sure how the turnout's going to be in August. I know sometimes that can be hard, but I think that um, it you know, will catch some people and then we're going to be doing more of it in the fall. So. Um, I did meet with, um, or I had the meeting for the inclusivity and diversity, um, but I, I didn't really have, um, had Jean and Dennis come, um, but no one else came, so I'm hoping to launch, relaunch that and have more people come and, and just maybe um, set a date and let everybody know. So if you want to be on that, let me know, and I'll reach out to remind you, and then um, I think I'm going to sort of do some individual invites of people yeah, to to come. I don't really want to put it in the Chronicle because I think it needs to be a small focused group and not um, a big forum. Um, but I think we can we can get a small number of people to kind of identify some goals um, and projects that we can do. So, so if you're going to be, you're you're personally reaching out to people in the community, it's not like just if people are into other people. If you hear word of mouth, yeah, you they help. Uh, um, I, them, or I kind of want them? to build a diverse group right. that has, right. that's a cross section of the community mm -hmm. and not. Um, Same old. Okay. Yeah, I, and so I'm I'm gonna maybe you know reach out to a few different kinds mm -hmm. of people mm -hmm. so that we have representation. 
Is there any way a brief description of what the mission of this working group will be? I think we'll determine that as a group when we meet. I, I want to hear from the constituents themselves. I don't want to dictate what the mission is. I think that um, the people who are coming here will speak to the issues and that will define the work. So there's not even a one sentence description of so it's just the name that will tell people what it is, or you will speak to each well, one? Well, when I invite people, I will explain what what we are trying to achieve, but I really want it to be informed by people who actually come here and by issues that they think need to be addressed. Um, and I want it to be prescribed, I guess. What I'm saying. But you could describe it briefly for the... Well, I, I have yeah. talked about yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, we want this place to be welcoming for everyone, right? right? That's right. right. Not sure. Some, some people are just Yeah, I mean, we 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 talked about. I talked about here about that we we want more men to come here. Um, that we want to create programming, and we want that to be informed by men and create programming that they want. Um, and that we're already doing the LGBTQ process um, with a group of people from, from the luncheon who have identified themselves as people who want to work on making that a great event and project, but also expanding on it into other programming. Um, and I think that we want to, we want people who speak other languages and people of color and yeah, what about people with uh, with cognitive impairments, such as people with, with uh, apparent cognitive impairments, just like mental health issues, or people with intellectual disabilities, or people with dementia, people also that, would, or their advocates, or self or self advocates, that would be helpful in terms of reaching a diverse population. We have a lot of people who are part of that worse. Yeah. Actually, that was all I was asking for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I, I just feel like we've covered it. I, I can. I wouldn't have asked it. I didn't want to hear it. So. No, it's not that I don't want to hear it. I, I, no, I, I, I want to. Okay. Um, so if you are interested in being involved in that committee or that working group, then it would be great to have you. Um, and I think that then we will identify how big the projects are and or what we want to start with, and we can figure how we're going to move forward from there. Like maybe we're going to break into subgroups and recruit people for those subgroups or we're going to work on all of the issues as one group. It, I, I just kind of want to wait and see who, who really wants to, what the time commitment can be and who, who comes to the table. So, um, so uh, we started the process of um, I talked to one architectural firm, and um, when the money is secured in the next couple of weeks, um, then we'll define the process going forward for the building upgrades and what that might entail and what um, what people are interested in seeing happen here. Um, and I'll keep you posted on that. Um, but you know, there'll definitely be things like which are already in, in planning in the planning process for the city uh, department central services to look at painting uh, things like that are, are just an automatic like of course we need to be painted indoors and out uh, but but things like what kind of we need new flooring what kind of flooring do we want to put in the lobby things like that so um, I think they you should look into the uh, ventilation system in this building and the, um, the problems with too much heat or not enough heat and the same with air conditioning or not enough. So so I look into it weekly probably. Yeah, so um, I um, there's not a lot that can be done. They are working on it and they are maintaining it and they're putting in new filters and it's just I, I'm not sure that they've gotten to the bottom of what the issues are yet but they are they are investigating it, sort of assessing it. Um, the person, there is a person who's, that is their sole job, um, is to to um, monitor all the, the um, 
central air services. The city HVAC person? Yes, mm -hmm. and so um, it's not that it's not being attended to, it's just that I think that there were issues in the building of this facility um, that weren't, you know, weren't done properly, potentially, so, um, you know, we, we call them and we adjust when we get complaints that it's too cold or it's too hot. We, we call them and we make adjustments, but there's only so much they can do, and then if there's high humidity or the weather goes from one extreme to the other, um, strange things happen in this building. I mean, I've seen, I've seen moisture on the floors. Um, I've had, like we had last summer, we had to close down the building because there was water everywhere <laughs> because, because of the transition from, hot, from cold weather to warm weather it was so drastic and, and the humidity was so high. So um, believe me, we're, we're, always, we're always very aware of what's going on. We just don't have a lot of control. And personal preferences are definitely, you know, like I, I go to the gym and the gym to me should be a cool place, not a place that's hot. But there are a lot of people that want the gym to be hot. And, oh, you know, so it's like they want my, they want the fans off, they, the gym's too cold. It's like, like hot they, yoga. Yeah, so it's, like, it's, it's also we're dealing with personal preferences. You might like it chilly, I might like it hot one day, whatever. So well, yeah, everyone's circulation is there. a little bit different. Right. And um, right. also, if you have less muscle, I mean, m less body fat, you're going to be, you know, I mean, there are just a lot of variations to or, or you know, issues that affect that. But I, I think you got to dress in meters. <coughs> I always bring a sweater here. So, the idea that you could run this whole, all the buildings that that are involved in the city government um, with the same kind of equipment or, you know, some kind of organization that can just run the whole operation all the time seems like a crazy notion to me. Well, he comes on site to... He's not just um, looking at a computer screen in some room somewhere. I mean, he comes here, he goes up into the attic, he, he's you know, dealing with the mechanics of the system. He, um, I, think, I don't think, I'm not sure there's um, a lot more that can be done. I mean, I know what you're saying, but when I was in Greenfield, the, the, the H, I created an HVAC, well, with the mayor, we created an HVAC tech position specifically who have the certifications and the education that deals with HVAC, these kinds of systems, because of it. So they, and it's on all the city buildings, and the problem is um, sort of like, was it built correctly in the first place? Sort of like the police station, and they spent how many millions of dollars on the roof leaks? Or, you know, different things. So actually, that person actually knows so what they can only deal with is the, what actually exists, but my understanding is if they can track down, even though the building is 10, 12 years old, what wasn't done correctly, then it's a huge capital investment to redo ductwork to read. So they try to make sure that, like you were saying, the fit, like we, you know, the filters weren't changed regularly. You know, so in their computer, they're like, okay, this building, we change the filters on these days. We do this, we do this, we do this. Once you've done all of that, if the system is built inadequately or incorrectly for the building, well, then that's a whole other matter. But I, but I know what you're saying. And I think you have to know, too, that any public building that you've ever been, I've worked for the government my entire life. They're have all you ever had it perfect? Never. It's just, this is a public building. And, you know, I have people that beside me want heaters on at, in an air-conditioned building. So it's like, it's not easy to, to have a public building functioning properly and according to every person's liking it too. So it's a, it's a process. Um, one more thing I wanted to point out is that AARP is sponsoring a shredding um, on Saturday um, for the for the city, basically, and it's free. Um, and Cindy and I will be there. 
at Smith Vocational in the parking lot. This Saturday? This Saturday. 11 to 1. 11 to 1. Um, and I hope you will all come on July 30th um, in the evening. It's in the evening, 6 to 7.30, for the uh, committee listening session for age and dementia friendly planning. July 30th from 6 to 7.30. Um, is everybody getting the constant contact mm -hmm. now? Okay. So um, we're trying to, you know, not everything that goes in the Chronicle is going in that, but we are trying to use that as a way to kind of remind people about what's coming up. So, um, um, and I think that maybe that's all I have to report at the moment. You will see that there are name tags here. There's a name tag made for everyone, and you can choose to wear it or not, and just drop it off at the front desk when you're not in the building, and they'll alphabetize it. You just have to come in and tell them your name, and they'll take it up if you choose. It's optional. Backing up in your report, new assistant director, does he or she have a name? Oh, yeah, uh, Jay Casella. She'll be starting on August 5th. Jane or J. J. E. Coming to us from. Um, she she's coming to us from the Food Bank Bank of Western Mass, and she is um, she has an extensive background in um, management and nonprofit management and uh, oversight of um, programs and facilities. So. I'll let you let her speak about herself. She gets here. Yeah. Okay, anything else anybody um, wants to bring up today? Or sorry to adjourn the meeting. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> How about you, Mr. Dennis? Would you like to speak to us? <clears throat> yes, uh, what's going on? Um, well, briefly, I just sent you a courtesy copy because I'm on L Division. No, it was a mistake. And so I had a long. As you know from our orientation guide, all of the conflict of interest laws applies to us equally mm -hmm. as to employees with the exception of section 17 and 20 where we have a little more leeway. So what started that was the bylaws of L Division said that two members of the Council on Aging must be on mm -hmm. L Division. Mm -hmm. That of course raised a red flag for me uh, because of that was done in 1990, but the law was rewritten in 2011, 2012, so it's a whole different world. So I happened to speak briefly to um, the city solicitor uh, at the farmer's market, where I got some of the information. Then I spoke with um, um, the legal division chief, the chief, the, the head of the legal division at Ethics Commission for an hour and a half, where we went back and forth. And um, essentially, it's what I put in there that it's what I wrote. I, had, I also spoke with Attorney Siegel this morning. He called me at home. We had a further conversation. And so it, it is problematic because of the way the 268A is written now. I'm changing the bylaws at Elder Vision to get rid of that because it's just, it, it causes too much problems. So, um, after speaking with Attorney Seawald this morning, um, the short skinny is, and the chief, uh, the head of the legal division, also confirmed to me that it's not an absolute bar, but there are things where you may participate, you must abstain, or you cannot participate at all. And it's always a case-by-case, -case, event driven thing, so it becomes very problematic as to, so, um, an employee here who was also on the board called the ethics division and it was more difficult for that individual so they resigned from the board because it was even the bar for them was even worse than yeah. it is for one of us so after speaking with attorney Seawald this morning to make a long story short it is possible um, for a console and aging member to serve an elder vision with the following provisions, meaning uh, I will be filing the Form 20B disclosure form, 
uh, which is a blank of one in the office of the mayor as the appointing authority. And then after that, it really is in, going to be incumbent upon me because I, I, I said I, you know, I, I just was appointed here and I want to continue, so I will continue on the Council on Aging because I've said unless somebody tells me something different or I've misread things and everybody between said, no, what you wrote is, is correct. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. But um, I guess I would say, because he said, you more than anybody, because of my past work, understand the law. So you know where these lines are. So the problem is going to be, it's going to be incumbent upon me to be very vigilant about when, if I stay in the council, which I will do, um, when I can when I can participate over there, setting. when I can't, uh, and when I say I'm sorry, some mm -hmm. I can have nothing to do this with this, and I cannot right. comment. Right. So it's it's a little burdensome to right. me because I have to be very careful because I don't want it, the council or the city or anybody else. Um, but I said no, I understand enough to know where the law, where all of mm -hmm. these lines are. That an average regular person who doesn't have to deal with that it becomes a bit overwhelming mm -hmm. and so because um, then sometimes you apart from the blanket disclosure you might have to file another individual ex disclosure or no disclosure is going to work because the entire thing is prohibited so um, so I after speaking with him and strategizing about the best way to do it so that it causes no problems for the council, for the city, for the mayor, uh, for elder vision. Um, I said I would be willing to to walk that line only because I know I, I know how to do that. So um, because elder vision right now has two babies. So I will stay on the council, and then I just have to be very careful about that. And then eventually I would really change the bylaws because. Um, has to do with the appearance. Yes. You know, it's sort of like, of course, when you talk to the Ethics Commission, I I understand the law, but part of me is we're all volunteers, we're all unpaid. The entire purpose of Elder Vision is to help the senior center. Mm -hmm. Because if the city doesn't have things in the capital budget or the operating budget, mm -hmm. that's what Elder Vision, so there is no conflict. But of course, right. speaking yeah. to the Ethics I mean, Commission, I said, yeah, but you, the council, could. You could influence them to buy things that they might not have bought. And I'm like, well, no, not, not really, but you know, that's, so that's sort of the way they look at it. It's called acting as an agent. Um, so I can't act as an agent of the console uh, when I'm in elder vision. And so anything that's here, even though we don't control personnel budget, which I explained to the, to the lawyer, we don't control budget, money, facilities, we make no decisions about what happens here. Also, the board, the Elder Vision does this vote to give the senior center money if the city... X dollars for what project? For whatever project. Mm -hmm. then, but wasn't there a precedent set that Bob was the director of both at the same time? Can't you say no. that? It was a pre no, he, he was probably shouldn't have been. Right? No. I would just say that the past is the past. Yeah. Okay. And okay, guys. Right, 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 right. The past is the past, and I'm only concerned about how to go how forward to legal in a way. So yeah, past has no precedent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in that case, it wasn't direct past. Mm -hmm. no. there, are, there is precedent. I know the Arts Council has a, an ink, and so part of the, the ink's bylaws is something from the Arts Council used to be on the ink board. And the it's the so, same issue. Same issue, yeah. yeah. And, you know, Stephen Petagorski was for a long yeah. time. Too. They can't control. They So they operate under yeah. the same. Yep, same thing. Same, same thing. thing. And, they and, and, and like they that. can't control that mm -hmm. board. So mm -hmm. if there's a quorum, oh, yeah. there's only one person. If there's a quorum and a quorum is four, and there's right. two people from Council on Aging and two regular people, no, exactly. and now you they vote, now there's, a, right. now there's a problem. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So it's that kind of thing. Right. So it sounds like we're to get more people on elder vision. Yeah, we have two we're vacancies. Right. So I mean, eventually, what would be best is, as 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 Attorney Seawall said, and as the other, if it was just completely separate, so that nobody ever had to, on a instance by instance basis, decide whether they could act or not act 
or abstain from acting, which are basically the three choices you have to decide each time something happens in the relationship between the two. So that's why I'm saying the burden is upon me to make sure, but I'm comfortable with, I have enough knowledge to know that. Um, and I can say, I'm sorry, the, the president has to deal with this, I can't do this. So I can't be the liaison to here, or from here to there, or you know all of those sorts of things. So that's the short skinny, as they say. I'm glad you're staying on. Well, well thank you for your kind, yes. kind words. All right, does anybody have anything else, or would you like to put anything on the agenda for next time that we didn't come up with today? We are meeting in August. Yeah. August 8th, it looks like. First, second, second Thursday. All right, then. Jean. Oh, Jane? She won't be here. I won't be here. You won't be here. Okay. I'll be here. Yeah, anybody else that might know right now if they're on vacation, then you can excuse yourself now. All right, then, if no, no, no other further things we could talk about, we can. I can actually really adjourn the meeting through a motion. Anyone want to make a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Okay, Casey. And second, Kathy? So all those in favor? Say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Okay, passes. Thank you. Great. 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 Great.